I'm Brock the Yahawa, Brock the Yahawa, Brock the Yahawa, Brock the Yahawa, Bashem, Rakakwadash, the honor to the apostles, the elders, salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching in truth and in sincerity. This lesson will be entitled The Kingdom of Heaven is at Hand. Lord, will you are edified? My source, RT, and this article is entitled Billionaire Predicts Rise of China as U.S. Empire Collapses. Ray Dalio compares political risk in the U.S. with recent economic growth in China. China is winning the economic competition against the U.S., according to Ray Dalio, the founder of the world's largest hedge fund firm, Bridgewater Associates. The U.S. is in relative decline while China has been rising, Dalio said on Monday during a wide-ranging interview with Bloomberg. He noted that the U.S. Federal Reserve has been behind the curve on monetary policy, adding that rising interest rates means all other assets have to adjust. Dalio contrasted political risk in the U.S. with recent economic growth in China, saying there is a reasonable chance neither major U.S. political party will accept the results of the 2024 election. There is a worry that one should have about the divisiveness and what it means for each other, he said. The billionaire has long predicted that the Chinese economy will overtake the U.S. in size to become much more powerful. Earlier this month, Dalio praised China's drive for common prosperity while urging nations, including the U.S., to narrow wealth gaps. According to the theory of Ray Dalio, he predicts the rise of China as U.S. empire collapses. And guess what? This will not happen. Because after Esau's kingdom, you will have what? The kingdom of heaven. Or the kingdom of Yahweh Second Ezra 16 and verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. When Babylon goes down, Asia will go down. Point blank period. During the second coming of Yahweh Shah. And modern day Babylon is who? America. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewill your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. Yahweh Shah is bringing judgment. So the nation of Israel has next, beginning with the elect. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16. And verse 21. Let's start at verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and farred sumptuously every day. This rich man is a representation of the nobility of Edom. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Lazarus is a representation for the nation of Israel. This is a parable, which was laid at his gate full of sores, the sores, a representation of the curses spoken of in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, the dogs, referring to these other nations. Why? Because they are joint heirs in Esau's kingdom. When the United States go down, China will go down and be submissive in our new world order. 
Second Ezra 16 and 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. You can't get around that. China's time is now. Okay. And that's it. They will not have next. And again, they are joint heirs with Esau. However, they do have a hidden agenda to be that top nation, top nation Slakia. Psalm 83 and verse 2. For lo, your enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate, meaning they have an alliance against thee. And the reason why I brought this out is to further prove that parable of how China is um, joint heirs with Esau in Esau's kingdom. And at the same time frame, in Psalm 83rd chapter, China is a part of this hidden agenda to destroy the nation of Israel. Okay. Second Ezra chapter six and verse seven. Then answer I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow? When shall be the end of the first going into Esau's kingdom and the, and the beginning of it that followeth, going into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of Yahweh Shai? Verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right? So after Esau's kingdom goes down, Jacob's kingdom will be exercised on earth, and not China. Last precept, and... But you know what? I think I have one more. After this one. Daniel 7 and 27. And the kingdom and dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom. Under the whole heaven. Shall be given to the people. Of the saints of the most high. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. So when will this prophecy, Daniel 7 and 27, happen? According to 2 Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And going into Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, it entails Daniel 7 and 27. Last precept. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7. And these are the words of Yahweh Shai. And as ye go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's what it's all about. We are approaching the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because we are in the end times, which means what? The downfall of Esau's rulership. So 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand and not the empire of China. Lord will you were at a vah, shalom.